Remember our trip last week to North Dakota? When I drank that lemonade at 22 Spruce Street in Clatville. I never felt so sick. I know. You were a wreck. Glad you are feeling better now. Look honey. A lemonade stand. I am so thirsty. Let's each buy a big glass. Now that's a great idea. You drink first. I want to get your picture. Oh you rascal. How do I look? You always look so great. Hey. What's wrong? You're not looking so good. Actually. I am not feeling so good. I think there is something wrong with this lemonade. I feel just plain rotten. Sick. Hey. Did you hear that? Someone sold some bad lemonade. It made the lady sick. And I know where she got it. So what? Well. As I say it. We could take the people who made the lemonade to court. And make lots and lots of money. How do you figure? Easy. We just say we bought some lemonade. We say we got sick. We'll see from here. California. They won't bother to come here for court. Oh you mean. They will just settle with us instead of traveling all the way to California from Dakota. You got it. It's a great idea. Isn't it? It sure is. Let's do it. Hey, the craziest thing happened today. Oh yeah? What's that? Remember last summer, when we were helping those kids with their lemonade stand? Sure. That was a blast. So what about it? Well, you won't believe it. But someone got sick. The lemonade made them sick. Now they are suing me. You got to be kidding. That lemonade was fine. I helped make it. Remember? Of course I do. And I would tell anyone that. It's just that. I would have to go all the way to California to do that. Why? How come? Because that is where the lawsuit is filed. Rather than defend it, I will probably just send them $3,000 to make it go away. Okay. I see. You figure it's cheaper to just send them the money than to go to California to defend it. Right? Right. Well hold on. Before you do that, let me call my friend. He's a lawyer. Okay. So, if I am hearing you right, some people you don't even know are trying to shake you down for $3,000 over some lemonade. That's about the size of it. Are you in the lemonade business? No. I've never been in the lemonade business. I just helped some kids set up a lemonade stand. So. You never shipped lemonade to California? Most certainly, not. Did you advertise your lemonade in California? No. Did you solicit people from California? Most certainly not. Have you ever lived in California? Owned property in California? Done business in California? Hold any California licenses? No, 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 and no. There was once a time when a court only had jurisdiction over people located within its state's borders. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. If someone didn't want to be subject to a state court, they simply left the state. Seems like that state's citizens could really get taken advantage of. Really? Everything changed with a case called International Shoe. Did you say Shoe? Yes. The state of Washington wanted to sue a St. Louis company called International Shoe in a Washington court. Under the Constitution, due process requires only that, in order to subject a defendant to a judgment, there must be minimum contacts between the defendant and the state. This gives the state court jurisdiction over people who are not within the state's borders. That is all that is required? Well, yes. So long as doing so doesn't offend notions of fair play and substantial justice. So, what does all that mean? Can I be sued in California? Or can't I? Come on already. What's the deal? That is precisely what I'm getting at. We must evaluate the connections between a non-resident and a state to see if the non-resident can be sued in the state. Oh. Is that what they decided with International Shoe? Yes. The court said. If international shoot is business with citizens of other states, 
and enjoys the commercial benefits. Then, the company is giving tacit consent to be sued in the state courts. We must see if the contact is merely casual or if it is systematic and continuous. If it is merely casual, the claim must be related to the contact to obtain jurisdiction. And, if the contacts are systematic and continuous, would that be sufficient to qualify a court for general jurisdiction on an out-of-state resident? Yes. However, if the contacts are less than continuous and systematic, a court only has limited jurisdiction. This is known as specific jurisdiction. More? Yes. I'm afraid so. There's more. Gee. How much more? The court must find that the defendant purposely availed himself of the benefits and protection of the laws of the state. For example, a nationally published magazine could reasonably foresee being sued in a state court for libel in any state where the magazine is sold. That makes sense. The defendant must prove that it is unreasonable for him to have to defend himself in another state. That the foreign state has sufficient interest in the dispute. What about the Internet? That makes it appear everyone has connections in all states, doesn't it? Yes. What about the Internet? The Internet brings with it its own challenges. Take a look at the 1997 case involving the Zippo Lighter Company. A company called Zippo.com was based in California. It ran a news distribution service, Zippo News, at nearly 150,000 customers. 3,000 of them were located in Pennsylvania. Zippo Lighter was incorporated in Pennsylvania and wanted to sue Zippo.com there for trademark infringement. Ahem. So, what happened? Zippo.com said it didn't do business in Pennsylvania and, therefore, shouldn't have to defend itself there. What did the Pennsylvania court say? The court said that jurisdiction should be directly proportionate to the nature and quality of the commercial activity that is carried out over the Internet. How's that again? For example, if the defendant enters into contracts and they involve repeated transmission of computer files over the Internet, well then, the court will have jurisdiction. That won't be the case if a defendant simply runs a passive website. That is, one that merely posts information accessible to anyone. How about where there is an interactive website? You know, where the user can exchange information with the host computer. Good question. Jurisdiction will be determined by examining the level of interactivity and by evaluating how commercial the exchange of information was on the site. Hello? Hello? Yes. I am the lawyer for Amy Benson. You claim that her lemonade made you sick. Yes. What do you want? You know I am representing myself. Please turn on your cell phone camera so I can see you. Okay. Can you see me now? Oh. Yes. I see you. For what you are. A shyster. Tag's not very nice. What do you want? Simply to tell you that we are contesting jurisdiction. I am having my friend in California draw up the papers. What's the big idea? Nothing. Simply that there are not sufficient contacts to support long-arm jurisdiction. Oh. And there's something else. We did some research about you. It seems your former wife lives here in North Dakota. She's been looking for you. What? Say. Not fair. Oh. It's fair all right. Seems you owe her child support. And she hired me to collect it. Have a nice, nice day.